Hello and welcome back to another episode of Adventures in Movies, the podcast where we talk about the Indian genre films you've never heard of, the ones you never want to hear about again, and the ones you can't hear enough about. My name is Nathaniel Meir and I'm the movie editor at AIPT. Joining me on these ongoing adventures is the host who just last week put out the call that we have to cancel Pitch Perfect 2. <laughs> That was a that was a fun discovery on last week's podcast. I'm Blake. Hello, and apparently, yeah, no more pitch perfect. Cut it out. Cut it out. Well, the original is okay, apparently. Um, no, she said she mm. retroactively hates. She retroactively the first one hates it now. Yep, because of that. <laughs> uh, we have a very special guest tonight. Um, writer, director, filmmaker Lucky McKee. You might know the name from The Woman. He's also done The Woods. Uh, all cheerleaders die, who I've heard people say all cheerleaders must die, but it's all cheerleaders die. He's a master of horror, for anyone who remembers that show. He's also worked on Tales of Halloween, and I think a lot of you remember him from May, which just recently hit Shudder in time for Halloween. Lucky McKee, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. No problem. And tonight, we're here to talk about his latest movie, Old Man. It's going to be coming out next week on the 14th. It's going to be in theaters. It's going on demand. It's also going to be on digital. For those in the uh, Southwest and the El Paso region, it's going to be playing at the El Paso Film Festival the night before. So definitely check that out. But we had a few questions for Lucky. And I wanted to begin. Um, I know that it's a screenplay was done by Joel Veach. Is that my pronunciation? Correct. Correct. Yeah, yeah um, Joel Veach. Yeah. So uh, what drew you to the project? Um. Uh, the first person that drew me to the project was Mark Center. Um, Mark had starred in a film I produced years and years ago called The Lost, which is an adaptation of a Jack Ketchum novel. And uh, we had such a good time working on that. I was a producer on that, though. My, my buddy Chris Searson directed that. But Mark and I really hit it off, and we really just were kind of looking for a project to do over the years together. We did a little short for this Tales of Halloween anthology, but we never got to have like that full meal of doing a feature together. And a couple of years ago, he he said, hey, my buddy wrote this play. He's he's turning it into a screenplay. What do you think? Do you think that this is something that you'd want to shoot? And he he gave me Old Man. And it was very much still, it was a play in screenplay form, really. Um, and he gave that to me. And I was like, you know what? I, 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 I Whenever I look at a piece of material, you know, I, I like to write my own stuff or rewrite my own stuff. But whenever I look at a piece of material, I just, you know, I have to have a person, I have to be able to like find a personal connection to it or a personal way in for myself so I can make the thing and old man spoke to me because I grew up in a very rural environment I, I grew up around a lot of good old boys those kind of characters and, and uh, I just knew that I knew that type of a person I knew them really well I'm related I'm related to that type of person um, and I, I, I thought I could you know bring something to it without being judgmental of of uh, you know of of that type of person, um, but just showing it, showing it for what it is and everything. So then eventually, uh, you know, we kind of got started putting the pieces together to getting the movie made, and uh, it looked like it was going to happen. So Joel and I sat down and just did just like a month of just like going over and over the script and trying to figure out how to. Yes, it works very well, very well as a piece of theater, but how do we bring it into the cinematic space, you know? Um, so we just worked it over and over. I mean, he, I didn't touch the script. He did all the writing. He's a brilliant writer and he's got a great ear for dialogue, but we just, we were kind of trepidatious, both of us at first. I think he thought maybe I was going to come in and fuck the script up. And then uh, <laughs> alternately, I thought I was like, is this guy going to want to play ball with me? You know? Um, Cause I got to be able to do my thing, you know, but we, we just hit it off like right out of, right out of the gate. And, and we got the script to a really great place. And then we were off to the races. That's uh that's kind of on that same track. And when you guys are sitting there and discussing this over weeks and stuff, I mean, your titular old man, how, I mean, Stephen Lang's, you know, he's a, he's a force in this thing. And it's yeah. kind of, it's hard to imagine anybody else playing that role so how did you how did you come to, to decide on him or was he who you had in mind to begin with uh you know we we danced around you know names like you always do when you're trying to put together a project and then you know uh i call him he he, he refuses to be to let me he refused to let me call him steven or mr lang or anything like that he calls himself he, he likes to be called slang so when i say <laughs> slang i mean steven lang okay. um but uh, he had worked. He had worked with a friend of mine, Joe Bigos, um, on a movie called VFW. Um, so, 
you know, once his name came up, you know, first thing I always do, it's like, if I know somebody that's worked with this person, I want to know if they're a good person to work with, you know, if they're collaborative and just, you know, have the kind of vibe that I like. Um, and Joe had worked with him. He's like, hire him, dude. Like slang is the best, you know? <laughs> um, and I had a brief, brief phone call with him. We talked about the material and it just, he just got it, you know? And, and the thing that's great about him is like, yes, we know him from a lot of television and movies, but I mean, he is so rooted in the theater too. Um, which is really important. It was really important in pulling this off because I mean, there was days when the actors were doing takes that were, you know, both him and Mark center, um, we're, we're doing these, you know, I was doing 10, 12, 13 minute long takes that are just all dialogue, you know, and these guys were just, they have that, that theater in their bones, you know, they don't memorize just the sides for that day or the scenes that they have to shoot that day. They memorize the whole script and they come in and plug in and freshen up on the day, obviously on what they have to do, but just to have actors that can go on runs for that long is really amazing. And you get, you start to get really, really natural, really cool performances that way, because you're not calling cut every three sentences that they say, <laughs> you know, <laughs> they, they can really, you know, sink themselves into the part, you know, and both he and Mark were just excellent, you know, excellent, you know, creative people, but also, you know, there's a lot of craft and skill that goes into the acting game, you know, and knowing where the camera is, knowing what plays, knowing what doesn't. Um, and those guys were just, it was just a, such a pleasure <laughs> to film those guys just acting their balls off every day. It was so <laughs> great because the movie really is a, it, it's it really is a showcase for them. You know, I tried to totally. stay out of their way in terms of like getting overly stylistic with the visuals or whatever. And we just tried to create like a really, a really appropriate atmosphere around them. And this was not a movie that I, I did extensive storyboarding on or shot listing or anything. I mean, we would just show up in the morning we would rehearse for about for a long time. We'd rehearse for like an hour, hour and a half sometimes and just really kind of figure it out together. And then the cameraman and I would, you know, we'd come in with some ideas about how we might shoot it, but it really, really, everything that we were doing was triggering off what the actors were doing. And it was about, okay, what's the place we can get the camera to really, really, you know, give the audience the most of what they're doing, you know? So. And, um, you mentioned the craft in there and uh, the the art of the performance. Yeah. Um, Stephen yeah. and Mark, they have a great, great chemistry in this. Uh, yeah. Did they have to work at it or did it just kind of develop naturally? Of course. I mean, you know, one, one thing that we did that was really helpful. I mean, you got to remember, we made this at the height of the pandemic, like, 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 um, you know, this was February of 2021, January, February of 2021. And it was, there was no vax, there was no vaccination. There was, everybody was still really paranoid. You know, not a lot of movies were getting made. Um, so we had to do a lot of conversations over Zoom and stuff like that. Um, but what we ended up doing while we were in prep for the film was we would just read the entire script. We'd get on Zoom and Slang and Mark and uh, producer Aaron Koontz. Um, I think the writer Joel Beach was there as well. And we'd, we'd, we'd all just listen to them say it out loud and that's that's the way that we found marks you know you start to build a rapport when you're doing that it sucks we weren't able to do it in the room but like we weren't showing up as strangers on the first day which i think was really important you know um and slang is just like a you know great class a ball buster sort of a sort of a guy you know in the best possible way you know what i mean so he was busting ball mike's mark's balls constantly <laughs> and mine too just giving us the hardest time but it was always so good natured you know and, and and it just made it fun you know and like i said i grew up with a bunch of you know kind of cranky old men in my life so <laughs> i knew that i knew that game i knew that dance really well and we just it was it was just wonderful but they bonded really quickly you know and i think especially I think it was kind of on mark to prove himself to slang because i mean we we've, we've watched slang our whole lives you know he's mm -hmm. he's done it a million a million different things a million different ways and just has experience that is just an insane amount of experience so you know i'm sure he was i'm sure he was skeptical of mark at first but then once they started doing scenes and the deeper we got into it they really really you know they were they were like, like i said they're like dancers you know two good actors when they when they kind of hit that groove you know because dialogue is like is, is like it's like singing you know yeah. um uh and the movement the way they moved around the set and everything like that it was it was a beautiful thing to behold you know wow so also like aside from the challenges of covid and everything else that you yeah. had during, during this i mean i 
the like you you brought it up numerous times like it's like a play you know this was a play yeah. and um, yeah. and you can see this you can you can just see it on a play on a on a stage very easily but yeah. conversely as a director directing this kind of one room one location thing i i have to presume that has a whole set of challenges unto itself Absolutely. so so how did yeah. you how did you approach that specific part of filming the 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 you know obviously i you know I, I watched a lot of my favorite films that were single location things you know uh or or you know great uses of a, of a very you know very small sandbox um you know spatially you know one of you know the first place we started when i got there and we were preparing the film was you know we got to build that cabin on a sound stage the interior of that so that meant that we got to design the whole thing we got to design the look and feel of it and the production designer she built it up kept building it up and it just as it was being built i'd go in there and i'd just sit and i just look this way i'd look that way and then you know towards the end when it got to actually dressing the set once she had the 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 skin on the walls so to speak and the windows in and all that kind of stuff we would just sit there and we would just look at this wall and just <laughs> think what what can we do here that that you know creates the right mood and atmosphere behind these guys we pulled a lot from the paintings of this brandy wine painter named Andrew Wyeth, um, who's a very, very famous painter. Uh, his 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 painting um, of the girl sitting in the field looking up at the house, uh, Christina's world, um, is the is the first thing that you would recognize of his. But he also had a lot of these beautiful oil, oil paintings of like old men sitting in chairs and like a disused old house or or sitting looking out a window it's just you know these are very somber sort of pictures so we really pulled from that and I mean you know we were trying to kind of recreate the feeling of those paintings with that environment and then the other thing you know that you know like I said we didn't heavily shot list this thing or anything like that but one thing that we were constantly reminding ourselves is we kind of pieced out the whole story and it's like okay we're doing this eight minute run right now or this 10 minute run or something like that what's the style of this section and we just tried to as we went through those different sections of the movie we just tried to change it up as much as possible and just give ourselves different feels again just do whatever felt appropriate in the moment you know um but yeah it's a, it's a challenge you know i mean the the cool thing for the production designer is she did all this hard work building this pretty beautiful set we see every inch of it <laughs> in, <laughs> yeah. in that thing so we just filled it with as much detail in there as we possibly could i mean there's there's drawings by my by my, my kid was three years old at the time some of his drawings are up in there and uh you know the, the storybook they looked through at a certain point my wife did all those illustrations and 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 just, you know, we just had a ton of stuff and we just started like thinking about what those different things would look and feel like, you know, as a backdrop to what, what these guys are acting, you know, because the great painters do that, you know, the environment, the subject is the subject, but the environment also says a lot, you know, emotionally and it works in more of a subconscious way, which is really, really fun stuff to get into, you know. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, old man's interesting in that it kind of goes against what modern films are doing. Like it doesn't have the large ensemble cast or it's not big and bombastic. Like you said, it's a showcase between two uh, personalities that are just talking to yeah. each other. Um, were you ever afraid that that sort of storytelling might lose the audience? It will. It will lose some people. You know, um, uh, uh, some people will show up and they'll they'll be expecting one thing and it'll be another. But, you know, hopefully there's just as many people that go into it expecting one thing and are surprised, delighted and surprised that it's 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 not exactly what they're expecting. That's what I like when I when I see a movie. So I'm not I'm not worried about that too much because. I asked myself all of those questions before I started making, <laughs> you know, right. um, and, 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 and what, a, what a cool challenge, you know, one of the other cool things about making this movie is that I got to shoot the majority of it in script order, which <laughs> never happens. You know, I mean, we got to start at the beginning and shoot all of, at a certain point we had to jump. We had to jump ahead to the ending because somebody, you know, an actor schedule or something like that. But, we only had to do that one time in that whole shoot. So the majority of that shoot, I got to start at the beginning and work my way to the end, which is, which is a real luxury. I'll probably never get to do that again, you know? <laughs> um, but, uh, but yeah, I mean, you know, it is two guys in a cabin for the majority <laughs> of the movie, you know, but they're, they're very magnetic, you know? And I think that, you know, we used a lot of technique to kind of keep the audience uh, engaged, I think, you know, and just the mystery of what's happening, I think does a lot of that work. 
on, on a first time watch, you know? Yeah. Well, yeah. I want to say thank you for your, all your in-depth uh, que- uh, answers because you've, you've checked off questions as I've, as I've gone down, just oh. like, answering. So <laughs> okay. I, I, you, you've yeah. done, a, you've done an awesome job. Um, but just, you know, finally, my, my last question, um, you know, you, this seems like just a really interesting shoot and a really kind of different experience for you um, as a filmmaker. Um, so, like, is there anything you're going to take away from this this movie, specifically shooting this, that you're going to kind of carry well, I, on? Well, I finally made a movie centering on men. <laughs> I hadn't, I hadn't, I hadn't, That's I hadn't, a very good I point. I hadn't, I, hadn't, I hadn't, you know, I... I, I, you know, I, you know, I've, I've dabbled, you know, here and yeah. there, but this is, this is really, you know, it's, I don't know, it's, it's, it's and the, that was, that was be, me being outside my comfort zone. There's a certain point where we did shoot with an actress after shooting for, you know, a week and a half, two weeks with these two guys. Uh, and I, I, w- I was working with this actress, we were shooting this kind of dreamy footage and all of a sudden I was like, wow, I feel like I put on like the most comfortable pair of shoes. Like, because I, 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 I've worked with actresses more than actors. Um, I've had good experiences in the past, but never focused on them as, as like the lead of a film, you know? The yeah. closest would be like the father and the woman, but that movie is the woman, you know, and it's about the women in that story. But um, <clears throat> yeah, that, that's something I'll take away. And the, the other thing which I brought up before is that I didn't, storyboard this thing or shot list this thing within an inch of its life before I started and there's something very freeing about that there's something dangerous about that because you can show up and like it's 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 bad to show up and be like figuring everything out on the day you know it's like because then all all sorts of people start coming at you with ideas for what you should be doing and it, it just can turn and then they get hurt if you're like no I don't think that's a good idea it just can turn into a mess you have to have a really really good plan especially if you're making an independent film but it did it did give it did make me realize that there are times when that's appropriate yeah. um to you know to let the let the the actors and the action that's happened before you kind of dictate where the camera goes and then and at, that, at that point you're getting out of your own way um instead of just trying to hit a home run with fancy shots every time you know if you've got good actors sometimes just a really nice medium shot is just works <laughs> <laughs> you know so yeah. um so yeah that was a big that was a big lesson so awesome well thank you very much lucky um yeah. old man is Thanks awesome oh yeah, we, we enjoyed oh, it you. so much we loved old man thank you yeah. thank you yeah. yeah hopefully people will want to watch it more than once because of the way it all turns out you know it's it's, it's trying to invite the audience to start all over again once they finish it so yeah. that would be great uh, if people could do that but yeah i'm really excited about it and really proud it was a great team of people and, uh, people will have the opportunity to see it more than once uh, next week october the 14th seen in theaters and then you can go yes. home and see it streaming and on exactly, yeah, <laughs> perfect, yeah, exactly. I like it's, that plan. Yeah, it's excellent, excellent story, very suspenseful, and you will see, in my opinion, no hyperbole, the best performance of the year. Yes, agree. Yes. Well, I agree. I'm biased, but I agree. <laughs> slang, slang is amazing. Yeah, yeah. slang. <laughs>